Hi guys, let's move on. Let's do the next question, which is question number two, part eight, which is three x plus two y is equal to zero. So let me write this as two y is equal to negative three x, which means y is equal to negative three by two x. So here y is my dependent variable, x is the independent variable. So I write, I have already made a table. Let's fill in the values. If x is equal to two y will be equal to negative 3 by 2 into 2 which is negative 3. Next like I said we need to take three values minimum ideally only three. Uh, my uh, personal preference is I take usually zero if it works out I take one on the positive side and I want to take one on the negative side. So let's say if x will be equal to zero. If x is equal to zero y will also be equal to zero. So 0 and 0, x is equal to 2 and this is minus 3. And if x is equal to, let's say, negative uh, 2, then y will be equal to negative 3 by 2 multiplied with negative 2. So 2 and 2, negative 3 into negative 1, that's 3. So this is 3 if it is negative 2. Again, I'll try and plot these four graphs on one, uh, four equations on one graph. So let's try and do it. 0 with 0. So this is my first one. Next is 2 with negative 3. This one and then negative 2 with 3. Again this one. Perfect. So now let me draw this. Join these three points using a straight line using a scale. Like I said I do not have access to a scale on this software. You will have to use a scale. I put arrows on both sides indicating it's a uh, line and this is for the equation this is line is for the equation 3x plus 2y is equal to 0. I'll take one more minute so let's compare this equation y is equal to mx plus c and my equation is y is equal to negative 3 by 2x. Again c is equal to 0 because there is no constant here and m in this case is equal to negative 3 by 2. Notice it is at a slant. It is not parallel to either of the two axes and it is a negative slope. So remember from the previous video, a negative slope slopes in this manner, which is from right to left. So we will look at the next question. Again, keep your hold your horses. We will come back to slope in a couple of minutes for sure. Let's do question number three, part two. Yes, part two, which is y is equal to two by three x minus one. So uh, this is uh, this is the form. Again, this is my dependent variable. This is my independent variable. So if x is equal to zero y will be equal to 2 by 3 into 0 minus 1 which is 0 minus 1 which is negative 1. So if x is 0 y is negative 1. If x is equal to 3 y will be equal to 2 by 3 into 3 minus 1 which is 2 minus 1 which is 1. So if x is 3 y is equal to 1. And let's say if x is equal to negative 3, y will be equal to 2 by 3 into negative 3 minus 1, which means negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. So if this is negative 3, then this will be negative 3. Chal. Now let's try and plot this. x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to negative 3. Next is x is equal to 0 y is equal to negative 1. If x is equal to 3, y is equal to 1. So these are the three points. Let's recheck 3 with 1, 0 with negative 1 and negative 3 with negative 3. Perfect. Let me join them using a scale, all three points using a scale. Now you may notice that my line may not be straight and it may not pass exactly from the same place where your line is passing in the graph. That's purely because uh, I'm not using a scale. Again, I put an arrow on both sides indicating this is a line 
and now I write the equation of the line that I have plotted. The equation that I have plotted is y is equal to 2 by 3x minus 1. Done. A uh, couple of things I want you to notice. I hope you've noticed that I've been taking values of x in a manner that y turns out to be a whole number. I don't want to work with fractions. So in case of this question, had I taken value of if x, I had taken it as let's say 1, my value of y would have been 2 by 3 into 1 minus 1, which is 2 minus 6 upon 3, which is negative 4 by 3. Now, plotting such complicated numbers becomes very difficult. That's why my suggestion to you is take values of the independent variable in a manner that the value of the dependent variable always turns out to be a whole number. Okay, uh, comparing this equation, which was y is equal to mx plus c, and let's compare this with the equation that we had, y is equal to 2 by 3x minus 1. So in this case, m is equal to 2 by 3, and c is equal to negative 1. Now let's see if I can figure something out. So m is positive in this case, which means it is going in an opposite direction from the way it was in the previous part 2 part 8. This was a negative slope which slants from here, which is uh, left to right, slants down and here it slants up, whichever way you want to remember. When we go on to the next exercise, I will share with you how to do the exact nomenclature but notice that these two lines are clearly different the one in black is a negative slope the one in red is a positive slope in this example and then what is c in this case c is equal to negative one now c is like i said is the y intercept which means c is the value where my line touches the y axis in this case it touches the y axis at negative one notice that my line touches the y-axis at negative 1. So, this y-intercept or c is negative 1. Let's look at the previous question. In this previous question, c was 0. So, where did my line touch the y-axis? Yes, it touched it at 0. Perfect. So, c is nothing but the point at which the line touches the y-axis. It's also known as the y-intercept. We'll do this in detail. Uh, in the next exercise but I wanted to introduce this to you so that you are aware when we start doing the next exercise. Let's look at the next question, question number 3 part 4. y is equal to 4x minus 5 by 2. So uh, here again this is my, let's change color, I will plot it with blue. So y is my dependent variable, x is the independent variable. So let's look at some options. if x is equal to 0, y will be equal to, let's say, what will y be equal to? 4 into 0 minus 2.5, which is negative 2.5. Here, I did not have an option, so I had to take a decimal value. So, if x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 2.5. Perfect. If x is equal to 1, y will be equal to let's say 4 into 1 minus 2.5 which is 4 minus 2.5 which is 1.5 perfect so 1 and 1.5 and if i take x is equal to negative 1 y will be I will I think will go out of the graph that I have plotted. So y will be equal to 4 into negative 1 minus 2.5 which is negative 4 minus 2.5 which is negative 6.5. Now this point negative 6.5 is not in my graph so I will not take this one. Let me take another value. x is equal to 2 y will be equal to 4 into 2 minus 2.5 which is 8 minus 2.5 which is 5.5. Perfect. So, if x is equal to 2, y will be equal to 5.5. So, let's plot these three points. 0 with negative 2.5. Done. Next is 1 with 1.5. Done. And then the last one was 2 with 5.5. Perfect. And now, let me join them 
using a scale. Perfect. I have joined them. I have put an arrow. This line that I have plotted as y is equal to 4x minus 5 by 2. Now again, let's compare y is equal to mx plus c and y is equal to 4x minus 5 by 2. The m here is 4 and c is negative 2.5 which is basically 5 by 2. So notice that my line is passing through negative 2.5 on the y axis and m is 4 which is positive. So again you would notice that the slant is like this the way it is in the red line as well. And you would notice that 4 which is the slope of this line is more than 2 by 3 which was the slope of the previous line. So that's why this is slanting even more. Good. Let's look at the last question that we do on uh, this graph. This is 2x minus 3y is equal to 4. So let me put this as uh, for, so I hope you know, have noticed that I have been putting all equations in the form y is equal to something. Now is it mandatory to put it like this? No, it is not. There are two options which I can do with this. Option 1, I can write 3y will be equal to 2x minus 4 which means y will be equal to 2x minus 4 upon 3. So that's option 1. Option 2 is I can write this as 2x is equal to 3y plus 4 which means x is equal to 3 by 2y plus 2. Both options are fine whichever way I want to work and draw my line is fine. The standard equation of the line though is given as y is equal to mx plus c. So you should always try and take your y as the dependent variable but is it mandatory? No. So let me do this specific question using the other method which is I am taking the value of x. So here I am taking x as the dependent and y as the independent. Both methods are fine. Here this specific one I just want to try it using this one. Right? So if y is equal to let's say 0 x will be equal to 2. So if y is equal to 0 x will be equal to 2. Now let me take a value of y in a manner that the first term becomes a whole number. So if y is equal to 2 x will be equal to 3 by 2 into 2 plus 2 which is 5. So if y is equal to 2 x will be equal to 5. And last one on slightly on the negative side. Let's see if y is equal to negative 2, x will be equal to 3 by 2 into negative 2 plus 2. That's negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So if y is equal to negative 2, x will be equal to negative 1. Now let's plot these. 2 with 0. So 2 with 0, that's my first point. 5 with 2, this is my second point. And negative 1 with negative 2, this is my third point. Now let me join them using a scale and a straight line. You would notice that my line is not straight purely because I am using freehand. You should be using a scale. I put an arrow on both sides. And I write the equation of this line that I have plotted. What I plotted was 2x minus 3y is equal to 4. Perfect. Now, is this a positive slope or a negative slope? Yes, you got it right. This is a positive slope. Okay. And what's the value of, uh, what's the y-intercept in this question? Well, uh, the value of y, so when y is equal to 0, or so when x is equal to 0, what's the value of y? Well, had you had I joined this using a scale, I would have been able to read it from this line. Right now, since my uh, drawing is not straight, I will not get into what is the value of c, but let's try and calculate it using the equation. So 2x minus, let me change color, I can't see it here on this one. So 2x minus 3y is equal to 4 which means 3y is equal to 
2x minus 4, which means y will be equal to 2 by 3x minus 4 by 3. So my slope is negative uh, slope is 2 by 3. So that's my n. So this is the slope. Notice this is less than the slope of the or not, not less. This is exactly the same as the slope of my previous equation, which was here, which was also 2 by 3. And now let's look at the uh, C. C is negative 4 by 3, which means this green line that I have should be passing from 1.3 somewhere here. So this is the line. Uh, this line should have passed from 1.3. Had you used a scale, you would notice that this line is passing somewhere from here. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.